By the end of this video, you'll be able to answer this quiz. Number one, home buyer sentiment has just set a new record blank. Number two, mortgage interest rates haven't been this high for blank years. Number three, mortgage applications haven't been this low since blank. We're about to run through the actual and factual numbers for Southern California in the Southern California Housing Market Report. Hey there. Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We have been helping buyers and sellers make the best data-driven decisions. So if you're ready to dive into a lot of bad news and then the real news about the real estate market, hit that like button and let's get started. And how are buyers and sellers feeling about the market? Well, according to Fannie Mae's most recent release on the Home Purchase Sentiment Index from September 2023, so it doesn't even include the recent record highs we have, we can see that we are at a nice low for consumer and sentiment. And the only thing that's keeping it up is the fact that most folks believe that home prices are going to continue to go up. So buyers are going to find that to be bad news. We hit a record high and a record low in this survey. So the share of consumers who say it would be a bad time hit a survey high of 84. And those who said it would be a good time to buy hit a new low of 16%. And the hits keep coming. Mortgage News Daily reporting that their index has officially hit 8% for the mortgage interest rate for the 30-year fixed rate. And you can see how it compares to the Mortgage Bankers Association, Freddie Mac. And there it is at a lovely 8%. In this article, they also mentioned that since the Fed's announcement on September 20th, this is the seventh new 23-year high for mortgage interest rates, but the first time it hit 8%. Congrats to mortgage interest rates for hitting that 8% mark. Mortgage News Daily also has statistics showing that mortgage applications have dropped to levels we haven't seen since 1995. Back then, I was graduating high school and dancing to Montel Jordan's This Is How We Do It. It's probably better I don't show you those dance moves right now. So with seven 23-year highs in less than the past 30 days and mortgage interest rates going up all throughout October and continuing to hit highs, we should see the numbers of properties going under contract absolutely decimated, right? Let's run through and take a look. Starting with Orange County single family, of course, we see that our numbers are down, but they're not all that far down from a year ago when interest rates were slightly lower. It appears that we've potentially hit a bottom at this point in time for demand, that there's a lower shelf that maybe we won't go below. We'll have to continue to watch and see the numbers, but that's what it looks like. So year over year, we can see that the demand is down slightly. Obviously, as compared to more extreme years, it's way down. And then more normal years, the demand is way down. But that's what we want to keep track and we want to see what's going to happen. The drop in mortgage application should have an effect on this as well. We should see fewer properties going under contract when we run the full October numbers, but we're going to have to track it and see. Like I said, it appears that there is a floor to demand that we've hit it and we're skimming along that floor. Same thing in Los Angeles. Part of the reason we're down slightly in demand is because we're also down in new listings. So we can see that there's less for buyers to choose from. It is entirely possible that if there were more houses for sale, that we'd actually see more demand year over year. In one county, we will see more demand year over year. We can see here, Riverside demand is down slightly as well. We're off 250-ish listings, but we're only down 32 properties going under contract. So again, we're definitely down from the surge during COVID and we're down from normal years, but we're skimming along the bottom. San Berdu down as well for listings and number of properties going under contract. Another important point, you can see the closed sales are below the pending sales numbers. So what this means is we're actually gonna see an increase in the number of sales. Looking at Ventura, now there is a pretty big drop in Ventura, almost 100 pending sales. At these levels, that's a big drop. There's not much trading in Ventura, but Ventura's march to its own drummer as we know. San Diego, so this is the lone wolf, the exception where we actually have more demand in San Diego 
in the first two weeks in October than we had last year in the first two weeks of October. So despite the interest rates going up, we have more properties going under contract in San Diego with less opportunity out there. The new listings are down. Crazy statistics to see. Have we hit the bottom in demand and now will it start to go up? I want to hear from you. Take a closer look at these charts by subscribing to our free weekly email newsletter. Quick run through the multifamily numbers. One of the only places that you're going to get this data regularly for Southern California. Now, in the last video, we talked about gasoline on the housing market that potentially could affect multifamily and single family. That was the fact that October 16th was going to be the deadline for 1031 exchanges. Well, guess what? We all woke up October 16th and the IRS decided to give everybody another month. So November 16th is the new date. But I think a lot of people are already committed. I don't think it's going to affect the numbers as much. But we see here, year over year, there's an increase in the number of properties that went under contract. That could be the effect of the original October 16th deadline for the 1031 exchanges. You're not gonna see this in every county, but you're seeing it here. And then inventory is down, number of new listings appears to be down for the first two weeks and with that high demand. So it's gonna suck up inventory. It looked like in Orange County, we're gonna to start to see inventory sticking, but based on what's happened in October, that could change. We can see here the increase year over year. So again, this is in a higher interest rate market. So cash flow is tougher now than it was a year ago, but we're seeing more properties under contract in Orange County and LA. This could be the effect of the 1031 exchange deadline being pushed like it was here in Riverside. Pending sales are down and listings are down. So not seeing that same trend we just saw in the other two counties. San Berdu, same thing. And these are markets that tend to have lower price points and higher cap rates, but we're seeing there's not as much demand in these two. Ventura, always all over the place. Got a tick up year over year. Number of buildings going under contract. And same thing in San Diego. More properties going under contract than last year. So definitely seeing the effect of that change in the deadline. And now that it's been extended, we could see it also showing up in October numbers and the first two weeks of November as well. So make sure you tune in to see that. Don't forget we're real estate agents based in Southern California. Don't even think about making a move to buy or sell without talking to us First. Taking a quick run to the Altos Research Reports, of course, you can subscribe to any city or zip code in the United States. Starting at the national numbers here, inventory is what I want to look at. And you can see that inventory is actually ticking up, which is atypical for this time of year. We should be cresting and going down. You can see that in more typical years before COVID, that this is the time of year where things went down. Now, when you look by market segments, you can see that the absorbed is still higher than the number of new listings. Things. So things are moving along, but we are going to probably start to see days on market extend. That's not unusual. That tends to happen this time of year. That's a national trend. Now, of course, we need to dive into more local trends to see what's going on because there are some differences. Orange County, we can see actually look how flat the inventory has been for most of the year. And that is different from some of the other counties. That's also contributing to the crazy median home price we We've seen year over year up almost 13%. We reported that in our other video we did, and we can see that the absorbed inventory does exceed the new inventory, except for the 1.5 price range there. So that median range, we can see that there may be a buildup there. And then the absorbed 97 versus 99. The lower half of the market does appear to be slowing in Orange County, and that's the part of the market that also tends to be more sensitive to interest rates. So interest rates are going up, so fewer of those folks are buying, but still days on market very low for the lower half of the market. Los Angeles pretty flat, but going up at this time of the year. Again, look at these dots. Those are year over year. It continues to go up a little bit, but should be dropping. Same thing here in 2022. 2021 dropped. 2020 went up a little bit and dropped. It was dropping in 2019 and dropping in 2018. So we should see it turn. If it continues to go up, that's where we could start to see potentially more price drops. But we can see here for the different market segments that the absorbed is higher than the number of new. So these continue to move along quickly. Days on market are longer than we're seeing in Orange County, but still pretty healthy in the lower half of the market. Riverside County inventory ticking up slightly, not that much. Doesn't look too different from 2021 or 2022. 
uh, should be starting to go down. So let's keep an eye on that. And then we can see that other than the top of the market, we have more being absorbed than new listings. It does look like fewer being absorbed at the top of the market. What's interesting to see is that 1.5 is the median price for the top quartile in Riverside County, whereas in other counties, that could be your first or your second quartile medium price. Definitely a difference in price points in the different counties. San Berdu, seeing that uptick in inventory absorbed are definitely exceeding the new. And you can see there's at the bottom of the market that median 325 lower quartile, almost double the properties absorbed than come into the market. So not much inventory there. Ironically, even with the number of properties being absorbed and the fact that it's the lowest quartile, the days on market is 63, which is similar to the top quartile. It's the middle of the market that's moving faster in San Bernardino. Ventura County inventory relatively flat. Doesn't look like we're seeing a big upswing, but we could start to see a big upswing based on the number of new versus absorbed. We can see that fewer properties were absorbed than new inventory for the three lower quartiles. The only place where it was higher was the highest quartile. It's still moving along very quickly at the lowest two quartiles, 21 days on market but we can start to see inventory stack up. We're gonna to have to keep, keep tracking to see what happens in Ventura. Not necessarily a bellwether for any other county. It does its own thing, but important to track. And finally, San Diego inventory ticking up slightly, definitely lower than years past and should be turning the other way. New versus absorbed, what's interesting is the top, we see that there's one fewer that was absorbed than new, not a big difference. But the bottom, we see that there were fewer properties absorbed than new listings. 14 days on market, very quick moving, but we see a drop in the number of properties absorbed. That's at the 750 medium price. So that's again, a portion of the market that tends to be more sensitive to interest rates. And as rates have gone up, we may start to see inventory build at that point in the market. If you like this market update, you're not going to want to miss this next one. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. And we can't wait to hear from you.